Now, what Peter does with this moment at resurrection is he changes the, the game. He changes what really is happening. Jesus comes out of the tomb. That within itself is a miracle. But to Peter, it's not just a miracle that he's alive. It's a miracle he could stay in there three days. Because for Peter, he sees the resurrection as labor and delivery. The cross was labor and the resurrection was delivery. It was God birthing a new man on planet earth. It was God bringing out a new Adam. It was God winning where everyone else thought they had beat God. And God says, you may put him on a cross, but that's just labor. Delivery is coming up, and there's no way he can stay in that tomb because I've designated a last Adam. Paul would grab it and another generation later and say, there was a first Adam and there was a last Adam, and there won't be another Adam because God's done having spirit babies. He had a spirit baby in Adam. He wrapped him up in dirt and breathed inside of him. And then he lost him to guilt, shame, and condemnation. Man had an illusion of separation, that he was away from God, so he hides himself in fig leaves and eats off the wrong tree. Next thing you know, he starts a religion and runs into the wilderness. And God spends the whole Bible trying to get him back. But it's a lost cause. Because no matter what God does, man fails. And so God intervenes and says, I'll do it again. This time I'll be man. And I'll save man from man. And so by dying on the cross, God then steps into that tomb, rolls the stone away, births out a new man. This time pulls the dirt off of him. Please go with me with this thought for a moment. We're not in some kooky fringe of Christianity. We're really at the heartbeat of everything we are as New Covenant believers. God took his spirit and wrapped it up in dirt, called it a man, breathing his nostrils. And then for thousands of years, man goes down this road. And then God does it again in Jesus. But in his natural state, he's no better than the first one. You, you, you with me? Are you okay with that? In his natural state, he's Jesus of Nazareth. The best he's got is signs, wonders, and miracles. And those are good. But they don't do you any good. I mean, your life's not different because Jesus fed the 5,000. Your life's different because Jesus fed you. Amen. See, it's, 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 it's great to, to hear the stories of the Gospels, but the stories of the Gospels, I love them. But he hasn't walked on my water. And even if he did, the great challenge would be, will I walk with him? Right. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So when Jesus dies... There's a birth process that happens in the spirit. God moves into the timeline in his spirit, but he takes the dirt off. When Jesus comes out of the tomb, he's not like a normal man. The Bible says he walks through walls. He disappears at will. He covers men's eyes from knowing who he is, all just by thinking about it. Because now we're not dealing with just a man anymore. And you go, well, this is where you lose me. This is the kooky side of Christianity. This is what makes Christians who they are. The belief that God did it through Jesus, and is now alive in this realm of the Spirit. I'll attest to you, if you don't buy that, you won't buy into the faith in who He is. Because if you, all you have is the Jesus of Nazareth that did signs, wonders, and miracles, you don't have new life. You have good stories and good principles. Even an atheist will tell you, Jesus said some good things. But saying some good things and doing a finished work are two entirely different things. And so at the resurrection, God births a new man onto planet earth. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, that only begotten son had to be given first. At Calvary, he's given. Whoever believes in him will not perish in the way he perished. They'll, our natural bodies die. But we live because we tap into the life of the everlasting. How? Because it was not possible that Jesus stay in the tomb. I present to you today resurrection was a reality because it was not possible for the baby to go past full term. In God, he delivered his son out of the grave as a woman delivers a child. Peter said, as birth pains, he came out of the tomb. Isn't that good news?